Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Mathematics, happy to see you here. Today we have a very interesting equation, I would say like a relaxing and quick algebra question. x cubed minus 27 equal to 0. And a lot of students may be saying, hey mister, this is like the easiest question i ever seen, because from here we can easily find our um, x cubed equal to x cubed equal to 27 and from here a lot of students know that uh, for example when we plug in instead of this x when we plug in 3 so we have 3 cubed equal to 27 yeah everyone know about it and they say okay x equal to from here x is equal to 3 and i say okay this is your this is up to you you can easily solve this question like that but according to a fundamental theorem of algebra it means that when we have the third power it means that we will have three roots like no more than three roots it means like at least three roots doesn't matter we don't know how many complex roots how many real number roots but we have three roots so a correct way to solve this question is to is to find all of these roots so this is a, a great solution but it's not like a perfect solution when you find all of this all of this so let's forget a few minutes about this about this solution which is like uh, only our expansion method this is not a solution to be honest yeah and right now let's solve this question uh, correctly and step by step let's rewrite it so as a result we have x cube minus 27 is equal to zero what is the correct way to solve this question first of all instead of this 27 we know that we can write 3 cube so let's do this right now so as a result we have x cube minus 3 cube equal to zero and right now let's look at this question from from another perspective we have difference of, of two cubes okay so let's remember a school formula let's see what will happen our school formula we have a cube minus b cube all right uh, how this formula looks like our formula looks like that we have a minus b times a square a square plus a b and plus b square here's our formula and right now let's apply this formula right here we have difference of two cubes so let's see what will happen when we factor our question so as a result what do we have we have x minus 3 x minus 3 and in another parenthesis we have absolutely great uh, moment for us because we can easily change a by uh, x and this b by 3 so nothing hard i guess yeah so as a result we have x square plus 3x yeah plus 3x and plus 3 square equal to 9 so plus 9 so right now if you look closely we don't have a simple like equation for us when we can easily guess what is x okay what is x equal to okay we can easily say okay right now we have a product of two parentheses and from this perspective i would say like okay product of two parentheses equal to zero when the first parenthesis is equal to zero so we have the first one x minus 3 equal to zero from here x is equal to equal to 3 so as you can see completely the same answer as we did as we solved it before but if you look closer right now we have the second parenthesis and what when uh, where the our our another roots hides okay uh, we have two roots right here because we have the second power okay we have x square so it means that right here we will have two roots and overall we will have three right here one and right here two roots so then we can easily say okay we solve this question completely so right now let's solve this quadratic equation x square plus 3x and plus 9 equal to equal to 0 right now let's find out a discriminant or doesn't matter i don't know how can you solve this question i will solve you with with the basic method so the first one let's find real quick of a discriminant with coefficients so we have a equal to 1 b equal to 3 c equal to 9 yeah we can easily plug in this in our discriminant formula b square minus 4ac which is equal to so b square we have 3 square minus 4 times 1 and times c times times 9 let's simplify this a little bit what do we have as a result our discriminant is equal to 3 square equal to 9 minus 4 times 1 times 9 equal to uh, 36 so as a result our discriminant if you look closely equal to minus 27 so it means that both of these roots will be like uh, complex because we're talking about negative discriminant a lot of students are confused about this part we're talking about only complex roots so doesn't matter let's solve it first of all let's find our x second and third let's continue for example right here yeah well, let's continue right here so x second and third because we found our x first x second and third equal to minus b plus minus square root of d we found it right now and we divide it by by 2a which is equal to so right now minus b we have minus 3 plus minus square root of uh, square root of discriminant square root of minus 27 and we divide it by 2a by 2 times 1 obviously yeah? right now let's simplify this a little bit because we can easily do this with this square root of minus 27 we can easily split by uh, by a product let's do this so we have x second and third equal to 
minus 3 plus minus square root. Instead of this 27, let's write the next product, minus 1 times 3 and times 9. And we divide it by, by 2. Right now we need to know a really great property. This property looks like that. When we have square root of a times b, we can easily Mm, we can easily write it as square root of a times square root of b. And this this works only when a product, yeah? We're not talking about addition, only when a product. Because with addition it doesn't work, okay? So we have minus 3 plus minus square root of, plus minus square root of minus 1, yeah? The first one times square root of 3 and times square root of 9. And we divide it by by 2. Right now, square root of 9 equal to 3, yeah, and this square root of minus 1, this is our complex unit, okay, this is our i. So as a result, we will have x second and third equal to, we have minus 3 plus minus, let's write first of all this 3, because this is equal to 3, we have plus minus 3, the next one, let's write this i, this is our complex unit, i and times uh, this square root of 3, don't forget about this, square root of 3, and we divide all of this stuff by by 2. Uh, right now a lot of students uh, want to split it by real and imaginary parts, so we can easily do this, okay? For better understanding we can easily we can easily do this, so as a result we need to divide both parts, so this part and this part by 2, by this common denominator. So as a result we have minus 3 half, minus 3 half, and plus minus, plus minus, 3i square root of 3 over over 2. This is our real part, this is our imaginary part with the complex unit, so everything is great. So we have the first one, the first root is a real number root, and the second and third root are um, complex roots. We have this i. So let's write our final answer to this question. Right now we can see a graph, you can see these points of intersection, which is also really great like to see this question from, uh, from geometric perspective. So right now what do we have answer? We have answer. We have x first equal to x first equal to three. We can easily check it real quick. X second equal to minus three half plus three i square root of three over two. And the third root we have x third equal to minus three half minus 3i square root of 3 over over 2. So this root is real number root. We can easily check it real quick, but we I guess we checked it in the beginning, so I, I don't need to do this. And right now these both roots are complex, complex, complex roots. So right now we can see a graph, you can see this point of intersection, which tells us a lot, because a lot of students say, okay, we have x cubed minus 27, equal to equal to zero and a lot of students say okay x is equal to three real quick because three cubed minus 27 equals zero this is a great method but this is it's inspection method you you need to to use this method when you solve this question and you need to check it real quick like i want to see a solution so sometimes happen that you can easily solve this question by inspection but only for checking not like for, for solution you need to check it and you say okay x equal to three but i solve it completely and then i say okay x equal to three but moreover we have two more roots so which which is really important thing in terms of mass. For example, when we have like the same thing, I guess x to the fourth power minus 64 equal to zero. So just agree with me when I read that x is equal to four. This is really weird solution just for you and for your teacher because you solve this question only in one line, which is which is really bad. If you look closely, we have x to the fourth power. So just forget about, just to remember about the fundamental theorem of algebra, which tells us that when we have the fourth power, it means that we have no more than four roots, at least like at least four roots. Yeah, we're talking about uh, we don't know. I don't know how many complex roots, how many real roots. But right here, we will have at least at least four roots. Four roots. Right here, we will have three roots. I don't know how many real number roots, how many complex. And we are talking about the maximum value of roots. We are talking about maximum three roots, maximum four roots. So it's not only one root, as we wrote it before. We write that x is equal to 4. This is a great, but this is not a common solution to this uh, to this question. So I really hope you understand my thoughts about it. You really need to mention a really interesting moment, really important moment about fundamental theorem of algebra. This 3 means 3 root at least, this 4 means 4 roots at least, and don't skip like this complex part, which is extremely important for you and also for, for your teacher. 
So thank you for your time. I really hope you understand this explanation. You can also write your notes, write your thoughts down into the comment section. It would be really interesting to read about it. Also thank you for your for your time, for your kind response, for your comments when you write it. I really appreciate it. I really need your response. What do you want to see on my YouTube channel? What do you want, what type of content do you want to see on my YouTube channel? I try to make my best to make a new content every day to find really interesting equations, really interesting notes because there are a lot of teachers, a lot of students who watch my videos and I really wanted to make the content which likes to do a lot because we are talking about a uh, wide uh, uh, range of people which like uh, watch my videos so i really appreciate when you when you leave your response when you leave your kind comment it's also really great a really great moment so thank you for your time wish you all the best in your life you can also write your notes write your comments down into the comment section and see you in the next videos also take care of yourself and have a great day